Hello everybody, my name is Minge Coxenworth and we're still doing our report on catfishing here at the BBC. In our last piece we saw Will Fahey tell the aggressor that he loved her in her native tongue of Tagalog. Before this he had told her that he planned to take her to America to wed her. Unfortunately, she failed to realize it was a prank and continued to harass him. Every time he tried to escape the catfish, she fell further in love with him. This foreign woman, unable to grasp his American sadism, clung to him as a foreign koala clings to a sadist average American looking teen. Is there nobody at the BBC who can write a bloody analogy? She clung to him as a fish clings to the water that comes into his gills. You write something better than you prick. Today we are in Will Fahey's garden where he plans to share with us the events that transpired that fateful May of 2018. My name is Minge Coxenworth. Let's get right into the catfishing. After I told her that I loved her, I eventually broke off. It was an empowering moment for me, but I was still afraid. So I turned to farming. Not like crazy farming, like wheat and all that. I mean like fruits. This is one of my tomato plants. There's a lot of other plants, but due to the change in season, those other plants aren't doing too well. I also blame global warming. Farming allows me to clear my mind and escape the trauma that I experienced when I was when I was catfishing. It also gives me a lot of nutritional, healthy things to eat. Many diseases are treatable and preventable with tomatoes. After I bought my first tomato seeds, I sent her a message. I figured the best way to cut her off would be to tell her that my internet was gone and I'd never be able to speak to her again. In hindsight, it wasn't the genius plan that I had hoped it was. This had all happened over Messenger, and I failed to realize that she could see when I was online. There should be a way to change that without blocking them. In a perfect Facebook, the idea would have worked. I got hit with that privacy invasion suck. Her response to me telling her that my internet was gone and I wouldn't be able to read her messages, she responded to that. Her response was, why? And then she sent a crying face emoji. A couple of days later, on May 15th, she texted me. Hey, I didn't respond to this. I didn't even open it. I just screenshotted it and sent it to all my friends again. Even though I'm the one that ended up getting hurt the most, none of this was done with the intent to hurt her. It was always just to be funny and to send funny pictures to my friends. How many times has a friend told you that they're catfishing some woman in the Philippines? A lot of people don't have a friend that's willing to go that far for comedy. But I was. And here I am, reaping the consequences. Right here we have one of my more cherished plants. I think this is like a jalapeno. And this is either a really big jalapeno or a zucchini. Three days later she texted me, being ignored worst feeling ever. She doesn't understand. Worst feeling ever? It's catfishing somebody and then having that catfishing experience follow you days or even weeks. I think at this point she realized that she wasn't going to get at me through pity. So she chose to turn up the enthusiasm with a bright and cheerful, hey, which was not responded to as none of them were. This also could have been her panicking as sort of a last resort like, hey, hello. This is when it got scary because her family members started adding me. I can't pronounce any of their names. I'm sure that if I were able to pronounce them, they would be beautiful names, but I don't have that talent. One of them messaged me, hello friend, I never responded. She wasn't my friend. She was somebody that either wanted to hurt me or wanted me to further my catfishing agenda. And I couldn't have either of those happen. I didn't want to get any deeper into this family that I already had. She finally decided to call me out. Well, I think the worst feeling ever was kind of a calling out, but this one was more direct. Hey, you're online, but you didn't notice me? Notice me, please? It's actually more of a, notice me, please. At this point, I was kind of concerned. I thought maybe this is some anime bot, you know? Maybe she's gonna be like, notice me, senpai, notice me. Maybe this is all a notice me, senpai meme, but it really wasn't. And it became clearer and clearer that it wasn't that. 
At this point, it had been two weeks since I told her that my internet was out. She was still persistent to her credit. I was online, but a majority of my messenger time was spent screenshotting her posts and sending them to group chats. Would I do it again? Of course I would, but I would have gone farther. The reason I feel so much conflict at this part of the history is because I just stayed silent instead of making more jokes. I know that I'm still recovering, and I know that I still struggle with this addiction, but since I ended up doing it eventually, I might as well have been doing it during this part too. Right there we have the first pumpkin of the season. By the time Halloween comes, I'll be three months clean of catfishing, I think. As the crops grow, it symbolizes the passage of time, and time is the only thing that can help the pain of catfishing. Then it got kind of confusing, and I'm sure that the confusion was because she loved me and she was losing her mind. At this point, June 18th, I haven't been talking to her for a month and she's still going after me. So I'm clearly very attractive or the promises that I made of flying her to America were something that she was excited about. She sent me hey with a laughing emoji. I didn't know what was funny. There wasn't anything funny about what she was doing to me. Of course, I didn't respond. I couldn't break my resolve. 10 days or so later, she messages me hi. She really loves me. When I look back, I can kind of see why people would think that what I've done is wrong. Because she was clearly infatuated with me. More days pass and she messages, hey, this happened on July 4th. I don't know why she chose not to wish me a happy 4th of July, but I remember it was probably the funniest thing that happened to me on the 4th of July. And I did show it to all my friends that I was hanging out with. I don't think that there's a more American way to celebrate the 4th of July than to be an American boy receiving a message from a Filipino woman that you catfished. George Washington definitely looked down upon that event and he was smiling at me in favor. Here you go, Georgie. At this point, she had realized that it was kind of a self-centered conversation. She was asking, hey, where are you? Why don't you respond? Instead of asking, hey, how are you? It was always about her wants about how she wanted to talk to me. So she texted, how are you? To some extent, I was finally glad that she was carrying her weight in the relationship. Right here we have more tomatoes. There's kind of a tomato theme if you haven't noticed at this point. This is supposed to be strawberries. I think we got maybe three this season. They're good, it's just that the bugs are a lot better eating them than the people are. Two days later, on the 13th of July, she messaged me. Hi. That's when I broke. That's when I messaged her, I am busy. And I reopened the door. The fact that the messages were happening closer and closer to each other made me think that it might never end. So I turned to a new strategy. A strategy that I'm not ready to tell you right now. I thought the strategy would lead me to salvation. But instead, the catfishing only grew. This is some sort of flower. A lot of the things that I've grown here, I don't really understand what they are. I think that's just how good my green thumb is. I don't even need to know what it is to grow it. For a long time, I thought these were lavenders, but smelling them now, I'm very sure that they aren't lavenders. I remember there was a time when I called her my flower. I know that there will be a point where I don't still feel the effects of catfishing, but it is a long time away from now. Everything is truly taking a turn for the worst. Will Will Fahey ever be able to return to a life of peace or will he forever be catfishing this woman? Will the strawberries ever come back into season? Was that a very large jalapeno or was it simply a zucchini? All of these and more may be revealed in next week's episode of True Victims of Catfishing. My name is Minge Coxenworth. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share for more BBC News. Thank you.